Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Germany once again and we're going to revisit a brewery who are really kind of at the forefront of the new wave of craft brewers in Germany just now. These guys are probably one of the better known German craft brewers, if you can call them that, throughout Europe these days. And I've had some very good experiences with these guys in the past. So for this one then, we are going to go down to Augsburg, which is kind of sort of in the southwestern part of Bavaria, halfway between Freiburg and Baden-Württemberg and uh, München in the southeastern part of Bavaria. We're going to go back to Frau Gruber for my third beer review, if I remember correctly, and we're having a look at their Dimension Shifter today, which is a double dry hop, a double IPA, coming in at 7.8% ABV. From what I understand, this one is a New England-style IPA, and uh, it's supposed to be pretty damn good actually. So the other beers that I've reviewed from uh, Frau Gruber before, it was the Yeast is King, which was one of their first beers. I reviewed that back in like 2017 or something. And um, the, I think the next one that I reviewed was in t was at the end of 2018, early 2019, and it was called Escape from Madness. And that was a really nice uh, kind of hazy New England IPA, if I remember correctly. But like I said to you before, um, I'm a huge fan of the traditional German styles of beer. My whole love of beer began with the, the Bamberg Rauch beers and then, you know, discovering the Weiss beers, the Helles, the Dunkel, the Doppelbox and all of this kind of came after that and I'm still a huge fan of these traditional German beers but there's a really exciting stuff going on in Germany just now with this new wave of craft brewers who are German trained but they're starting to have a go at uh, brewing the likes of IPAs and stouts and things like that. There's some very, very exciting stuff going, down, going on down there in Germany at the moment and Frau Gruber are probably one of the better known breweries that are doing this actually but there's some great breweries down there, Yankee on Kraut, um, you know, uh, Freigeist, uh, Himburg's Braukunstkeller, uh, who else is there? Camba Bavaria, of course, as well. You know, there's lots, and, uh, you know, Munich Brew Mafia, there's lots of really interesting German craft breweries at the moment, so keep an eye on the German craft beer scene. My good friend Peter, over at the Clueless Drinker, he reviewed a lot of these uh, German craft beers when he was living in uh, Regensburg in, uh, in Bavaria as well. So make sure you go and check out his channel too. Hopefully he can review some more Frau Gruber. I, think, I don't think he's had too many of these, if I remember correctly, but hopefully he can get a few reviews of these done at some point too, because I'm sure he would really like them. But as I say, my third review from this brewery and the other two that I've had from them have been really quite nice too. So I've got high hopes for this one. So let's see how we get on then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Frau Gruber Brewing before hopefully I can add some more at some point in the near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on your own uh, country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Frau Gruber Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So Frau Gruber Brewing, as I've told you before, were founded by Matthias Gruber and Enzo Frauenschuh, who were skate park friends from Augsburg in uh, southern Bavaria. So um, Matthias had previously worked for a company that manufactured printing presses and he went out to Australia to work for a few months and while he was there Enzo visited him and they went round drinking the local craft beer and the reason for this was that Enzo was studying at Weinstefan and he also worked as a brewmaster at Brauhaus Regula, quite a well-known brewery in Augsburg for around five years as well. But in 2013 they founded a craft beer wholesale business together which was called Liquid Hops and this focused initially on importing Belgian and American American beers into Germany and this was initially a part-time venture but then the demand for craft beer started to grow hugely in Germany and then Matthias decided that he was going to make craft beer his main profession. But the pair soon started home brewing together and they sold their beers at market where they proved to be hugely popular and this inspired them to go for it. 
and really scale the business up. So they combined their names and chose Flau Gruber as the name of the brewery and they agreed with Marcus Lohner to brew at the old Camba Brewery. He was apparently planning to, to run the old brewery as a sort of rental facility for the numerous gypsy breweries that were popping up in Germany as well as using uh, some of it for his own brewing activities. Of course Camba Bavaria are a brewery that are definitely worth checking out as well. They've got some really lovely traditional beers as well as some of the, you know, they're brewing some of the sort of more new wave uh, IPAs and black IPAs and things like that. I'm sure it was either a black IPA or an Imperial Stout that I reviewed from those guys last time. But over the last couple of years, Frau Gruber Brewing have managed to expand their capacity and they've been building their export markets as well and making lots of new beers. And as of March 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, according to Untapped, they've produced 57 different beers and they're doing a lot of these kind of hazy New England IPAs at the moment too, which is, is quite exciting. So um, yeah, that's all I'm really able to tell you about Frau Gruber Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And, uh, you know, definitely uh, worth checking out this brewery if you get the chance. So, um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this particular beer then. So as I said to you, this one is a 7.8% double dry hopped double IPA. I believe it's a New England type IPA, but I'm sure we'll find out when we uh, when we open up. I'll just let the camera focus on it there. The artwork on this, I have to say, is really quite cool. Um, this one was released here in Sweden on the... Um, what was it? It was released on the 27th of March 2020 as part of the Tilferid Sortiment, one of the uh, small partiers, basically. Uh, the beer itself, apparently it is hopped with Herzbrucker, which is one of the slightly stronger alpha acid German hops. Uh, Victoria's Secret, which we know is the little brother of Galaxy, some lovely passion fruity notes from that. Brew One, which is a hop that you don't see all that often, but it's got a lovely kind of pineapple note to it as well. Then it's got Chinook BBC and Centennial BBC. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> I can't remember what BBC stands for in uh, brewing terms. I know what it means in naughty terms and uh, also British Brainwashing Corporation, but I, don't, I can't actually remember what it means in brewing terms. We'll need to look that up again. But Chinook, as we know, is the big sort of piney resinous hop with the big grapefruit on it. And uh, Centennial is that lovely sort of lemony, sherbetty type hop as well. So a good hop bill in this one. And it says it's got wheated malt and corn malt in it as well as oats. So yeah, it probably is going to be a New England IPA, this one. But Frau Gruber Craft Brewing, GMB Hall, and our Weber I, Eins. Uh, ach neun vier zwei drei Gundelfingen ah die uh, am der be am der Donau Germany so yeah very close to uh, to Augsburg these guys actually so um yeah really nice can this one I do like the sort of old school computer graphic kind of thing there the sort of uh, computer ba vector base lines and things that's pretty cool but there you can see on the back of this one this is at the top of the beer here this is the Frau Gruber brewing company symbol and you can also see it here on the back in white as well which is is pretty cool so um, yeah I really like the artwork on this one so without further ado let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting so another interesting thing happened with me and Frau Gruber so when I was um, in at Mr. Lee brewing company in Seoul in Tokyo, I was uh, so in Korea rather. Pfft, brain is not working today. Um, so when I was at, in at Mr. Lee Brewing Company at Seoul in Korea, um, I was filming away. I was sitting with Michiko and I was filming away on doing one of my little tasting things. And then this, uh, there's a white guy came up and spoke to her and said something. And I thought oh, it's a bit unusual. But then once I stopped filming, he came up to me and said, "Oh, you're the guy who reviewed one of our beers." And it turned out he was the, um, what his, I forget what his exact title was, but he worked for Frau Gruber Brewing Company and he was building export markets and things like that. So he was going to a beer festival in Hong Kong to promote some of the Frau Gruber beers. He'd been in Japan, I think he said as well. And um, he was in Korea, um, building ties, like building some ties with some of the Korean breweries as well. So a big shout out to Daniel at Frau Gruber Brewing Company as well. We sat and had... Um, a couple of beers together which was uh, which was really nice actually he was a very nice guy actually and I would really recommend that you check out Mr. Lee Brewing Company if you find yourself in Seoul in Korea it's a, they do some very very good New England IPAs as good as the things that you're going to get from the likes of Frau Gruber and uh, some of the other 
uh, European breweries. So yeah, that was a pretty cool story with um, with Frau Gruber Brewing Company. It was quite random because he recognised me from doing the review of the Welcome um, Return from Madness. He recognised me and asked me, Chico, is that he showed her the video on the phone? Apparently, and was like, oh, is this him? So um, yeah, that was it. Was quite funny actually that we. That, that happened. I didn't. It's something that just wasn't expected at all, actually, especially in a place as random as Seoul. But yeah. Anyway, as you can see with this beer, then this has poured a lovely kind of bright yellowy, um, hazy color. This one. This is definitely leaning more towards the yellow side of the the New England spectrum. You can see there was about a quarter finger of a frothy white hair on this one. That's just faded away to be a very very thin foamy layer. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. If you see I put my fingers behind the glass, this one is pretty damn hazy. The thing you're always going to get with these New England IPAs, as you go further and further up the, uh, the alcohol scale, they are going to get thicker and more opaque essentially. So just be aware of that with this beer style. There's a lot uh, you know that is one of the things you are going to notice about these. They get hazier and hazier due to the more uh, the the greater volume of oats and uh, and wheat and things that are put into these. But it looks very very nice. This one definitely one of the more kind of yellow looking New England IPAs that I've come across in recent times. But nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is. So um, yeah, let's take a look at the aroma then and see how we get on. Ooh. That comes across really nicely, actually. So, straight away with this one, you sugar it up a little bit. It's interesting because you do get... The, the yeasty notes that come out of this are a little bit more kind of grainy and farmhousey, which is kind of interesting. I would be curious to know um, what kind of yeast strain they're using in this. Would it be a Vermont yeast strain or would it be a London Fog? Or is it a house one that they've made themselves? I'd be really curious to know. But you do get, when you sugar this beer up, you do get a little bit of that kind of woody, um, you get that sort of woody, vegetally farmhousey kind of thing. There is a little bit of that kind of underpinning the beer, but you've got some very nice sort of wheaty qualities in there. There's a good bit of oaty creaminess as well. The wheat, I think, has a little bit of bite to it, which is kind of like some of the Trillium beers that you're going to come across. So it's in, in some ways, I think this one smells a little bit like a Trillium rather than a, a tree house, which is a bit more kind of creamy and things. Although it does have, the more and more that you smell of that, um, the more uh, um, the more it kind of comes together, actually. I really, really like that one. Um, that's, um, it's quite nice. The malt base in this is really good. The more and more you smell of it too, you start to get a little bit of a kind of biscuity quality. Um, so it's really it's, it's really nice how that um, how this all sort of fits together to be honest with you. Um, the malt base on this one is is pretty solid actually. You get a little bit of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuit thing out of this. You do start to get a little bit of sweetness out of it too, the more that you smell of it. But on the hoppy side of things, then when it comes to the green side of the hops, I'd say this is mainly quite big and quite floral. Um, and with all those different hops that are in there, especially the Chinook, you're going to get a bit of that. I'm surprised it's not a little bit more kind of piney and resinous. I do find it to be more sort of spicy and floral rather than piney and resinous. There's a good little bit of a kind of grassy quality to this one as well, which is nice. Um, and that gives the beer a little bit of freshness, but there's quite a lot of fruity character to this one, which is really nice. So for me, you can get a little bit of the darker, pa uh, darker passion fruit note in there, which will be coming from the... Um, from the Victoria's Secret. There's a good bit of a lemony note as well. You can definitely pick up some of that zesty lemony type quality from the from the centennial in here too. I'm not really getting the kind of darker grapefruits that you would normally get from Chinook either. To me, this one, it actually smells mainly kind of soft and tropical fruity. So you've got passion fruit in there, which will def that will be from the um that will be from the Victoria's Secret. You've also got the pineapple notes in there too from the brew one. You can really pick that up, but it smells as if there's a wee bit of like an apricotty kind of papaya type thing in there as well. So some of these hops, of course, they do have the main fruit that they smell like, but quite often they can give you the impression of um of other fruits. So it does really smell like quite uh, passion fruity, a little bit mango like um, you know, sort of papaya. Apricots. So it's got that whole kind of tropical vibe to it, but at the front of the nose, for me, you can really get a nice little bit of a lemony, zesty quality out of this one. So I really like how this. Um, I really like how this goes together. Actually, this is a very, very nice beer in my opinion. So um, 
yeah, I love this one. I love, I love the aroma of that. It's just got everything you want. It's got a little bit of that kind of zesty note to it. It's got a good little bit of floral quality to it as well. And then you've got this lovely kind of smooth malt base in there. So, um, yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck into it. But um, let's have a taste of this one now and see how we get on. So this one is the Dimension Shifter, uh, a double dry hopped, uh, double New England IPA from Frau Gruber Brewing Company near Augsburg in southern Bavaria in Germany. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, Skoll, Prost. Oh yeah. That's really nice actually. First impression of this is just how clean and drinkable it feels. Um, it really does. I mean, I think it's something I've said about quite a few of the um, the German craft beers that I've had. Um, I mean, you, when you try when you just try all these craft beers from lots of different countries, you do start to notice trends from different places. Like, for, for example, the Slovenian beers that Davor gave me, you really notice that the the Slovenians like their beers to be oily in terms of the fruitiness and things like that. And you know, and um, with the German craft beers as well, you really get that drinkability element to them. German beers are always very clean and very drinkable in my experience. So this one, um, the mouthfeel of this is really nice. It's got a little bit of wetness to it, a little bit of oiliness as well, but it really does have um, that typical sort of German drinkability to it. I like this. It's really good. Um, so yeah, thumbs up to Frau Gruber Brewing Company for this one. This is another solid beer. I mean, the yeast is king. I remember trying that. The Belgian IPA. And that was really very nice. And then the Return to Madness, that was the first hazy sort of beer I had from them. This is, a, is a, as far as I can remember, I think this is only the third beer that I've tried from this brewery. We used I used to see them in Copenhagen sometimes, but when I saw them, the beers weren't fresh, so I didn't buy them at the time. But I think we are going to start to get a few more of their beers over here in Sweden now. So hopefully that um, continues. I think you can get them usually through glass banking, but it's very rare that I mail order beer. Um, so yeah, it is nice to, to return to this brewery after quite a while. And they have done a very nice job of this. So, you know, big thumbs up to them. This is a brewery that I would love to review a bit more regularly. And I will say too that this beer, it is just in very good condition now. I'm filming this one for you on the 30th of um, of March 2020. And um, I've always felt with the New Englands, you really need to give them about two weeks or so in the can just to let them mellow out a little bit. If you drink them like really, really fresh, you, um, you just get green from them basically. I think you've always got to let these mellow out in a way um, that you didn't have to do with the West Coast IPAs. And the other thing I'll say about this one as well is that with a double dry hop beer, I think that it's especially important to let them mellow out a little bit because they can feel just a little bit dusty, if you like. This one feels really nice and smooth and juicy. I think this one really is just in its prime at the moment, so that's another positive to give this beer. So yeah, let's try and break down the flavour of this one then. So, I would say that if I compare this to the American New England, it is a little bit more, it's a little bit more like a kind of treehouse, to be honest with you. It's got that smooth drinkability to it, but it feels even smoother. It's slightly less sweet and even cleaner, actually. This is this beer is just really nice. I mean, for 7.8%, um, this one, it, it's stupidly drinkable. It's just crazy how drinkable this beer is. But it really is very nice. So straight away with this beer then, you can feel the middle of your palate is blanketed with that lovely white bready wheaty base. If you go towards the back of the palate, you've got a little bit of a whitey kind of, uh, uh, sort of wheaty bitiness to it. But then as you move further forward on the palate, you can really feel that just smoothening out. And it starts to lean more towards that kind of smooth, oaty quality. And in the very centre of your palate, you've got a lovely kind of biscuity. You've got a lovely kind of biscuity note to this one too. So yeah, um, yeah, you've got a lovely yeah. You really have a lovely sweetness to this one in the um, in the centre of the palate, which is um, which is really nice. Um, that I find that the sweetness, that the little bit of it's not quite caramel. It really is more of a 
kind of biscuity sweetness there. Um, I'd love to know what the malt base on this beer is. I don't think it actually tells you. It just tells you that it's um, wheat malt and things like that. But I would wonder if they do put a little bit of you know carapils or something in this. There is just something that m makes me want to say there's carapils because if you go to the back of the palate there too, you do with some of the bitiness of the wheat. I think there might be a little touch of pilsner malt in this one just to kind of crisping the beer up a little bit and give it that drinkability. You can really, um, Pilsner malt is difficult to describe the flavour of, but it really just gives you a certain kind of feel. It just gives you this kind of almost fre uh, fresh kind of crisp feel to the beer. Um, it's the same way with acidulated malts. When you add acidulated malt into it, it makes the beer just feel very kind of slick. Um, so yeah, pil I think there's a bit of Pilsner malt in this one and you can definitely get that at the back of the palate but as you come further forward on this one it really smoothens out very very nicely and you get the more kind of oaty creamy notes out of the beer which is is great and then in the center of the palate you've got that lovely little bit of sweetness and biscuity quality there which is covering the boozy side of the beer i really like how this one goes together the malt base is, is pretty spot on in this one and i like it how they've kind of kept it thin enough to make the beer drinkable but still giving it a very full flavor and the further you go into the aftertaste you will feel it thickening up on the uh, the middle of the tongue but it doesn't become sort of overbearing if you like which is always good so yeah but yeah solid beer that really nice um, in terms of the hoppy side of things then, let's move on to that. In the back corners of the palate there is a little touch of earthiness there and it's quite a, a bright earthiness. I think that's maybe from the Herzbrucker. Herzbrucker if I remember correctly, Hallertau Herzbrucker. It's, um, I want to say it's about 7 or 8% alpha acid. It's a slightly stronger, slightly more bold version of the uh, the the the, the, the Hallertown and Tintnanger hops. It's, it's, a, it's a noble hop in terms of its flavour, but it's definitely a bit more bolder. Um, so I wonder if that's been used as the uh, one of the bittering hops for this beer, because you really do get a little bit of that lovely light German earthiness there. And as you come further forward along the sides of the palate, um, it, that, the, the sort of floral notes, the German floral notes kind of come out, but then as you reach the front corners of the palate, you do start to get a little bit more of a kind of kick in the balls floral and resinous quality to it which is probably likely to be the Chinook and then around the front curve of the palate the beer is again a little bit lighter and grassy and it's a bit of a more stronger American type grassy note rather than being a kind of more um, German grassy note if that makes sense. The German noble hops they've got a lovely um, kind of brightness to the floral and grassy components there as well as having a, a, almost a little bit of light sweetness to the earthy components too so at the back of the palate I think it's quite distinctively German and then as you come further forward it is a little bit more American like in its flavours and then behind the front curve of the palate that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer but yeah the fruitiness in this it's very nice. It's got a good combination of wetness and um, oiliness as well, which is um, which is great. I really like how this how, how the fruity side of this beer comes out. So, if you go towards the back of that oily bubble, you start to get a little bit of um, the darker thing. Where you get a little bit of a darker passion fruity note, and you get also some of the kind of grapefruity qualities there. But as you push further forward on the tongue, it evolves a little bit more. The the grapefruit, of course, will be coming from the Chinook. The passion fruity notes will be coming from the Victoria's Secret, but as you come further forward, it really starts to evolve a little bit more. You start to get a wee bit more of the kind of pineapple qualities in this one. It really becomes very pineapple towards the front of the palate. And in between that, you get a little bit of a kind of mangoey, apricoty sort of transition sort of thing. But to me, it is very pineapple on the tip of the tongue. And then as you go right towards the very edge of the palate, I think that's where the centennial comes out and you're getting these lovely lemony zesty notes there they're kind of mixing with the, the grassiness on the front edge of the tongue and it just gives the beer that little bit of like a kind of zesty edge which is quite nice and that i think also um gives the impression of a greater uh, drinkability i mean for 7.8 percent this beer is stupidly drinkable and for the germans uh, at least in my opinion when i've tried all these German traditional beers and stuff, that's what it's all about. It's all about the drinkability and the sessionability of beer and that seems to be reflected in what they're doing with this one at Frau Gruber, but it's 7.8%. You're maybe going to manage two of these and then you know, you'll have a very good buzz for the rest of the night. Um, for me, double IPA like this, it's, I, just, I enjoy just tasting different things. That's 
that's what craft beer is for me. I just like tasting all the different stuff. So for me, this one is a little bit of a treat. But if you were in the mood to session a few of these, you know, you could have two, maybe three, and I think after that you would have a year. The pavement would be moving and a lot of things would be happening. But it's a very, very nice beer, this one. This gets a big thumbs up from me. But Frau Gruber, they've got a reputation, and on the basis of this beer and the other ones I've tried, quite rightly so. So yeah, I really like how this one goes together. All the hops really showing their head when it comes to the uh, the fruity side of things. As you go further into the aftertaste, I think you start to get a more wheaty, bitey and grainy type quality out of this beer, which is really very nice. And I like that about this one, I have to say. I do like that it's got a bit more of a kind of bitey quality the further you go into the aftertaste, but it really maintains that sort of smooth German drinkability. So on that note, let's look at the... Um, Let's look at the um, the mouthfeel of this beer then. I would describe this beer as being pretty mid-bodied, pretty much right in the middle of the scale. Carbonation is very smooth. Overall, the mouthfeel, it is really smooth, but at the same time, it's got a little bit of an oily character to it, which is nice. Um, as I say, you've got some, that the oiliness helps bring out some of the fruity notes, and at the same time, it gives you some lovely smoothness from the oaty qualities in this beer. In terms of hoppy bitterness, I think we're talking... Oh, we'll be talking with this beer. I think this beer is your sort of... It's either your standard 30 or it might be a little bit higher at 40. I don't think this beer is going to blow the head off you in terms of its IBUs. It's just got the kind of standard level of IBUs that you'd expect from a New England IPA. The malt base, as I said, is very, very smooth and at the same time it's quite light, but you do feel it thickening up the more and more that you drink of this beer and uh, that works really nicely for this one I have to say and um, so yeah a lovely balance of smoothness and thickness in the malt base here it's got a little touch of sweetness in the middle of the palate too you've got about 30 40 IBUs in this one and then the fruitiness and um, it's quite juicy but at the same time you get a little bit of an oily character out of it as well which I really quite like so yeah this is just a really really damn solid um, New England double IPA the thing I've noticed about it as well is um, when you go further into the aftertaste you do get a little bit of the dustiness that you'll expect from the dry hopping you do get a little bit of that around the edge of the palate um, but it's not overly noticeable I mean it depends on what level you dry hop the beers to I know when I had the um, the even more cowbell from Lervig and Amundsen that was like 80 grams per liter or something that they dry hopped that beer to and it was just it was just crazy the beer was like it was very nice but the beer was like ridiculously dusty um but this one i think they've just dry hopped it to a nice level you get a little bit of it at the dustiness and the aftertaste but overall um it is very very nice so um yeah this beer gets a big thumbs up from me they do have another beer coming out in the next um small part here so you will see me review that at some point but i do hope that we continue to get the um we can i hope that we continue to get the frau gruber beers quite regularly here in sweden because i do enjoy the beers that i have from this brewery and they are if i go to germany they are a brewery that i always try and look out for actually so um yeah let's leave it at that for this one this one was the dimension shifter 7.8% double dry hop, double New England IPA coming in at 7.8% ABV. I've really enjoyed reviewing this one for you and it's nice to return to this brewery after quite a while. Like I said earlier, a big shout out to Daniel who I met in Korea from this brewery. That's one of the most random encounters I've ever had um, when it comes to the craft beer thing. But um, yeah, it was awesome. To review these, um, to review this beer for you, and I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on it as well. I'm sure we'll see some more Frau Gruber beers at some point in the future. So thank you again for watching my beer reviews. As always, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Frau Gruber as well. Um, always interesting to review things from these guys. Um, check out my social media. Check out Frau Gruber Brewing Company, and I will catch you guys very soon. I'm sure we'll return to this brewery at some point soon. The um, Dimension Shifter, 7.8% double dry hop, double New England IPA from. Frau Gruber Brewing in Augsburg, Bavaria, Germany. Slange, Skull, Prost.